Good morning, you guys. Hello Pika, hello Nookus, happy Friday to you guys. I still have no idea what I want to do my project on. What What are you thinking? Do you have are Are you uh, Are you juggling a couple different things? Nuka says is Project One still due on the twenty ninth? Probably not. Um, I think it'll be a little. I think it'll be a little later than that. do something in system identification but it's still such a vague idea I hear you um Pika you can shoot me an email I'll give you some more direction so you can have something a little more concrete we're not gonna have another exam right no no we, we just had the one exam hello Belkut you started ordering parts for the chameleon I talked to you about that's a really cool project you should post that on the discord it's um it's making your own uh, robotic chameleon that changes colors hey good afternoon good afternoon Jack 
Amin said, I walked by your office the other day. Good old days. Yeah. I know. Hey, we're going back in the fall. I don't know if you've heard the word, but we're going back. I'll be back in that office. You can come by, say hi. Squared Circle said, uh, is today going to be the day? <laughs> Gay going to be. They're going to throw back to you. I just, <laughs> I got it as I was reading it. <laughs> Wait, who, what's the band that sings that? Oh, you're getting your first dose this Sunday. Okay. You guys getting the vaccine? Oasis. Good afternoon, Mike. I'm getting a job which will make me eligible for the vaccine. Okay, cool. Good afternoon, Quaron. Antonio says, I'm getting the first dose next Saturday. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm, I'm excited for, um, you know, the vaccines become more available, things open up, we get back out there, start brushing shoulders with people again. That's going to feel good. People get to smell my stink again. <laughs> Does anyone know if we'll continue to have online classes in the fall? I know that some classes will be online, but th the university is pushing for most of the stuff to uh, be in person. I work at Wegman, so the Danny vaccinated me. Wait, who's the Danny? Uh, yeah, thank you, Danny. UB Rugby just got cleared to practice later this month, so I'm pretty pumped about that. Nice. Oh, Danny Wegman, you're on a first name basis. Okay, another Buffalo thing. You guys know Charlie the the Butcher? Like, that's a, that's a famous Buffalo place, like Beef on Weck and whatever. I, I run into that guy all the time at Wegmans. We must be on the same shopping schedule. Is one of the topics from the graduate project PDF okay if I haven't gone over it with you? Yeah, just send in a proposal. Everyone memes about Danny in Rochester. Nice. Oh, that's what Danny's favorite sub means? I had no idea who Danny was. 
I was like, sh uh, sure, like we'll have this sub, but I don't know who Danny is. Beef on Weck is good, but the salt, the salt on those rolls is like too much. They need to, they need to cut back on the salt. That's all I'm saying. That's too much. Colleen is now the CEO. <laughs> Do they have Colleen's favorite sandwich? Oh man. Guys, I'm gonna level with you. I got up today and I don't know what it was, but I just felt terrible. Not like physically, but just emotionally. I don't know if you have days like that. I was just like, I do not want to face today but we're still doing it i really enjoy hanging out with you guys and i think it's important that uh that we stay in the rhythm of seeing each other working ahead <laughs> believe in yourself <laughs> yeah but Hey guys, that's okay. It is okay to have off days. We all have off days. Even and especially your professors. Drink some water. It happens to me when you're dehydrated. Here we go. I'm taking Carl's advice. But if today's one of those days for you, you're just not feeling up to life, you're not alone. And that's okay. Because things always turn around. So you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, all right? Okay. We're going to talk more about Root Locus. This too shall pass. Well said, Ranger. Well said. Um... Okay, what I want to do, I'm going to go off to the side here a little bit, because I think it's it's good to recap what we're doing. Um, so let's start. Let's start with this. Let's say because we were making a controller for a DC motor, you have. The angular velocity coming off and the input that you put in is is voltage and we're starting to work with transfer functions so this block for the DC motor we call that the plant and uh, we the the transfer function we usually use is G so G of Z is the model for this DC motor and our output, we usually call it Y, and our input, we call it U. And this system by itself, if you, um, if you get the characteristic equation, and if you find the roots of that characteristic equation, that tells you, like, what's the settling time, the rise time, the peak time, the the overshoot so that's that's all stuff about the the properties of the motor so um when you're talking about a transfer function the roots of the characteristic equation are the same thing as the poles of the transfer function So what are the poles? These are the values of Z that make GZ evaluate to infinity. So the simple way to think about the poles of a transfer function, they're the roots of the denominator. Because if your denominator goes to zero, then the whole thing, you're dividing by zero, so the whole thing goes to infinity. Okay, so as control systems engineers, we say, hey, um, 
what if I want to change these transient characteristics? Or if you're working at a company, they're going to tell you, hey, I have some new performance characteristics that you need to satisfy. So let's call these like the new, like I'll put a star next to them because they're new and these are the ones that we want now. So these desired performance characteristics, one way to get it is we build a, we take our system, you know, it's got its outputs and its inputs, but instead of just willy nilly picking what the control input is gonna be, we have a controller pick that for us. And um, we put this in a feedback loop where we have an error going into the controller. What's that error? It's the difference between the output and a desired output. So the we have our reference. Antonio, word is fine. Okay, and you can you can break this feedback loop if you do block diagram reduction. You have the closed loop transfer function, which looks like this. One plus G of Z over D of Z. And when you look at this, you still have your same output, angular velocity. But now our input to the system is our reference, which is our like desired angular velocity. And just like our original system has its own characteristic equation and it has poles, this new closed loop system has a characteristic equation. And if you, if you get the roots, the roots are gonna dictate what the settling time, rise time, peak time, and overshoot are. And once again, the roots are the same as the poles of this transfer function. And the poles of this particular transfer function are called the closed loop poles. Because where'd this transfer function come from in the first place? It came from us building this closed loop feedback system and, and so on. So, and we're, we're getting to root locus here. We're coming back around. Um, we know that these transient performance constraints, if you have your closed loop poles at a certain location in the complex plane, then you can achieve these performance characteristics. You can achieve your dreams. So, um, let's say your closed loop poles need to be at a specific location. And let's call that specific location Z star. So I want my closed loop system to give me those performance characteristics. Well, in order to do that, I need the poles to be at a specific location. And this is where root locus comes in. root locus allows us to choose our controller d of z such that our poles are at this special location z star And okay, so this, uh, that feeling when you're late to class because writing your grad project proposal was actually fun. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Looking forward to it. Kate's looking at her graduate project related to the intersection of digital control systems and social justice. And you might be like, how is there an intersection? There is. Ask Kate about it read her proposal okay so how does root locus help us do this there are two criteria that we identified 
Number one is called the magnitude criterion. And number two is called the angle criterion. It's all connected. You're gonna do fault detection and motor controllers. That sounds exciting as well. Okay, now these, these criterion are, are interesting. What the magnitude criterion says is, hey, you want your closed loop poles to be at Z star, right? So here's what, here's what needs to happen. If you take your transfer function for your system, so maybe this is the transfer function for the motor, if you multiply it with your transfer function for your controller, whatever that's gonna be, and if you take the magnitude of that product when you plug in Z star into that transfer function, it better be equal to one, okay? And this product of G and D, it's called the open loop transfer function, by the way. Open loop transfer function, struggling to write. The angle criterion says this, if you take that same product, evaluate it at Z star, if you take the angle in the complex plane, it better come out to 180 degrees or, you know, pi radians. That's the same thing. Okay. And we were talking about the angle criterion last. So I want to, I want to come back to an example we were doing yesterday. Okay, so actually let's let's go right here. Let's go right here. I'm going to I'm going to clear off some of this. Cuz this problem kind of illustrates where the root locus comes in. Okay, so let's say we have our system. It's just called G. And you could think of this as like the 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 model for a motor and let's say that based on some performance characteristics i found out where i need my closed loop poles to be they need to be at 0.4 plus or minus 0.4 i and so i'm trying to design a controller that guarantees that my closed loop poles are going to be right there so our open loop transfer function g of z times d of z needs to satisfy the magnitude and angle criterion at this when when i evaluate it at this pole location in order for those to be a closed loop pole um, so i'm going to show you Sorry, I got stuck there for a second. I'm gonna show you um, something first. Okay. I don't know why I always give myself so little space here. Okay, so here's the angle criterion. G evaluated at Z star times Z evaluated at Z star. It has to equal pi, all right? and the way this angle calculation works is you can break this up. The, the angle of the product of these two transfer functions is the same as adding up the angle of each of them individually. So pi needs to be the angle of G plus the angle of D. So this tells us something about our controller. If I solve for the angle of D, whatever my controller is going to be, I don't know yet. The angle contribution is going to have to be pi 
minus the angle contribution of, of Z. So this is going to guarantee that the angle criterion is satisfied if my controller satisfies this relationship. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate this angle contribution for G. And we covered a way to do this last time using um, a graph in the complex plane. But I'm going to show you um, another way to do it. It's also going to involve a graph in the complex plane, but this way is faster. So I'm going to show you a fast way to do this. So we're going to calculate this angle here. Okay. So we're going to do this right here. A useful graphical way to calculate that angle. What you do is you look at G of Z. Let's just rewrite it right here. It's one over Z minus 0 0.8. And what you do is you calculate the pole. So if we look at this, the pole is the value of Z that makes this transfer function go to infinity. So the pole is when Z equals 0 0.8. Because if you plug that in here, you'll have 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8, you'll have one divided by zero. And so this is, this is definitely a pole. So you find the pole and then you draw it. In the complex plane. So it's positive 0 0.8 and I just drew an X right there. Okay. Now remember we're evaluating the angle of G when uh, Z is equal to Z star. So, okay, here's the next step. We're gonna plug, we're gonna graph Z star in the complex plane. So Z star is equal to 0 0.4 plus or minus 0 0.4 I. Um, so that's actually two different roots. It's a complex conjugate pair. But what I like to do is just pick the positive conjugate and throw that in the complex plane. So I'm going to do 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 I. Maybe I'll use a different color. I'm going to put it right here. So this is Z star is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 I. Okay. Here's, here's the next step. This is the, this is the new technique. Well, it's, it's not new. Um, but what you do is you start from the pole of G of Z and you draw a ray through that desired root. And it just happens to be at 0.4 plus 0.4 I this time. And the angle of G evaluated at Z star is just this angle right in here. So this is the angle of that transfer function evaluated at Z star when it's equal to 0.4, whatever. And um, actually, just by looking at this, um, if you do a little trigonometry, if you drew like a triangle on this side, like this leg length of the triangle would be 0.4. This would also be 0.4. So you, you actually have a 45 degree angle in here. So this outer angle is going to be 180 minus 45. So this is 135 degrees. Not in space. Nailed it. Okay. So the angle G of Z is 135 degrees. And um, let's put this in radians, three pi over four radians. So what does this mean for my controller? <clears throat> However I design my controller, uh, it's going to have to satisfy this angle criterion. So I'm going to plug in what I know the angle of G of Z is 
3 pi over 4. And uh, so that's just pi over 4. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot a rule. I forgot a rule, everybody. So, look at... Actually, let's go back one page. Because we did an example yesterday where we had a transfer function that was the same. It was 1 over z minus 0 0.8. Let's go back here, see if you can remember. Yep, yeah, we worked with this transfer function yesterday, h... 1 over z minus 0.8. So this is this is the same as g. And um, we had the same z star, actually. And we calculated the angle of this transfer function when evaluated at z star. And if you go through the math, it's the angle that this complex number makes relative to the positive real axis and we drew it down here so it was at minus 1.5 1.25 minus 1.25 i and actually if you get that angle it's minus 135 degrees um oh i wrote this as a decimal before but this is minus 3 pi over 4. So, I actually forgot something. We should be getting a negative 3 pi over 4. So, let's, let's go back here and see what went wrong. So, the, the angle in here, it's definitely 135 degrees. It's 3 pi over 4. But, if you're using this graphical technique that I just showed you, where you, like, plop down the root and then you draw z star and you get this angle in between if the root that you drew is a pole then this angle that you get you have to put a negative sign out in front so maybe we'll write that if um calculating the angle contribution of a pole take the negative of the angle of this graphical method so if I'm careful to apply this rule which I neglected at first I need to put a negative sign oh, that's, that doesn't look good I need to put a negative sign out in front And the same thing over here. And this is important because now when I subtract, I have to do minus this. And so I'm actually adding 3 pi over 4. So I get 7 pi over 4. But in terms of an angle, 7 pi over 4 or it's equivalent to minus pi over four. Because what is seven pi over four if like you if you make an angle relative to the positive real axis? It's like I make pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then I come over here to seven pi over four. That's the same as minus pi over four. So that's that's why I'm saying that because we're talking about angles here. 
Okay, so... Okay, stay with me here. We know that the angle contribution of D of Z for my controller needs to be minus pi over four. So we're gonna use this graphical method. Shouldn't that be uh, seven over eight? Seven pi over eight. Oh, is that the angle that I drew? No, I don't think so. No, because one pi, one pi is just going to over here. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's just take the minus pi over four. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna think um, where would the pole, wh or what does my controller have to be to make an angle contribution of minus pi over four? So, and we'll use the angle that G of Z made as a template. Okay. So, okay, we're, we're gonna write this. The angle of G of Z, which was one over Z star minus 0 0.8. This gave us um, minus three pi over four. So the question is, what does D of Z have to be to give us minus pi over four? Is that what we needed? Yeah. So when I look at this, based on this rule here, if I want to get a, a negative angle, this number one, D of Z should have a pole in it, meaning it, it'll have some polynomial in the denominator because having a root in the denominator produces a negative angle. Okay, so then the question is, so I know it'll look something like this, but what should this A value be? Well, for G of Z, we placed 0 0.8 right here on the X axis, and depending on where that was, that was responsible for creating this 135 degree angle. So we have to place A in such a position that it creates a 45 degree angle. So what we can do Well, I know the height of this root. Oh no. is 0 0.4. If I want to make 45 degrees with that, I have to make a triangle that has a horizontal leg of 0.4. And I want, when I connect this, it'll make 45 degrees in here. So, if I put the pole of D of Z right here, it'll make this 45 degree angle with this desired root. And because we have this in the denominator, it's gonna give us a negative angle. So, this works if the pole of D of Z is at Z equals zero. Okay, so by the angle criterion, 
actually if So if d of z equals 1 over z, because I'm setting a equal to 0, then angle criterion is satisfied. And we will have a closed loop pole at z star equals 0 0.4 plus or minus 0 0.4 i uh d z star or dz well dz itself will be equal to one over z but if we take the angle of this actually we could we could even like check right now because another, we also looked at how you can do this in MATLAB. Okay, so MATLAB. So I'm going to say D is a transfer function. Why aren't we considering the other pair? You can just consider one uh, sign of the complex conjugate pair. Because the, like if we considered the negative instead, it would just give us the negative of each angle. And um, it turns out that the root, the resulting root that you find for D, it would be in the same place anyways. So basically you just choose one conjugate or the other and you go through the analysis. So if I make D equal to one over Z, the way I make this transfer function is it's one divided by z plus zero because you have to include um the the lowest order term here and then we're making a discrete time transfer function so i like to be in the habit of specifying that in matlab but we have to define a variable first so let's let's just make up a sampling period i think i said in the example it was 0.2 so we get one sample every 0.2 seconds Oh no. Okay, so it's one over Z. And then let's say Z star is 0 0.4, and we'll do the positive conjugate here, plus 0 0.4 I. So the way to evaluate D at Z star is you say, I wanna evaluate my transfer function D at Z star, and you get this. And then what you do, you take the angle of this, we'll just plug this in here, and we get this. And wait, what did we want it to be? Minus pi divided by four? Oh, beautiful, it's the same thing. What happens if you evaluate this at the other conjugate? It'll just be um, the same thing, but it'll be the positive. It'll like reverse the sign. Um, so if we take the angle now evaluated at this new Z star, it should be the positive. Wait, where did I go? Yeah, I'm a little lost. It's uh, it's tricky. I won't deny that it's tricky. It's, I think the best way to understand this is if we keep doing examples, it's very hard to grasp at first. Um, Are we just discussing the angle criteria? Yes, that's what we're discussing right now. I need to go back here. Um, okay, maybe 
Would you post the notes today, please? Yeah. Yeah, I'll post the notes. All right, let's let's expand on this just a little bit more. So let's say I pick D of Z is one over C. Uh, just come back to our goal for a second. Um, if I implement this controller in a feedback loop, then our closed loop transfer function is going to be equal to this. Okay. And, um, we want the poles of this transfer function to be at Z star is 0 0.4 plus or minus 0 0.4 I. That's like the big picture goal. And we're trying to figure out what D should be. Cause it could be like, who knows what it could be. We use the angle criterion to say, hey, D of Z should look something like this. One over Z. Um, one, so D of Z, in order for the poles of the closed loop transfer function to be at a particular location, you have to satisfy the angle criterion, which we nailed it, but you also have to satisfy the magnitude criterion. So what I want to show you is that if we just pick D of Z equals one over Z, we satisfy the angle, but we don't satisfy the magnitude yet. Um, and so our closed loop poles won't actually be here yet. Let's go back to MATLAB to show that really quick. Um, so, okay, here's D. It's just one over Z. Um, we can make our closed loop transfer function. Actually, let's call it like G closed loop. I'm going to show you a long way to do it first. Oh, wait, we have to make G as well. I haven't made that in MATLAB yet. So G was one divided by one divided by Z minus 0 0.8. So we're going to do Z minus 0 0.8 and it's going to have the same sampling period. So we have G and we have D. So our closed loop transfer function, or wait, we'll make open loop. It's G times D. So you can do stuff like this in MATLAB and you can also do your closed loop, which is, I mean, the way I've been writing it, it's G times D divided by one plus G times D. So if you build transfer functions, you can do this kind of math. Um, when you do it this way though, sometimes it, it doesn't simplify the polynomial as much as it could. So like the way we simplify it, there's a command min real. I mean, we'll go over all this stuff again, but I'm just, I'm just kind of running this through with you. So I, I got the closed loop and I, and I simplified it. Let's calculate the poles of this closed loop transfer function. Though the poles are the values of Z that make this go to infinity, right? So, I mean, one way to do this is like you could look at this polynomial and you could get the roots. So you could get the roots of Z squared minus 0 0.8 Z plus one. And see, we're not, what did we want these to be? We wanted them to be at a 0.4 plus or minus 0.4 I. So Right now, D is not doing its job. Oh, oh, sorry. I missed the minus 0 0.8. Okay, so all, all that did is we have 0.4, but we don't have the imaginary part that we need. The reason it's not working yet is because we haven't considered the magnitude criterion. We considered the angle, but we didn't consider the magnitude. Hello, not prof. Welcome to the channel. Okay. 
Estes is always one step ahead. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay. So, the way to deal with the magnitude criterion is... It's as simple as throwing a gain in front of our controller. So let's say I know I need one over Z to satisfy the angle criterion. Well, <laughs> duh, the magnitude criteria. So what we do is we throw a gain in front of it. This is like a scripty K that I like to use. What is the magnitude criterion again? It's just, it's this. If you take G times D and you evaluate it at Z star, if you take the magnitude of that, it has to be equal to one. And this is relatively easy to fix because we can just change K so that it's equal to, so that that product is equal to one. All right, so let's, let's do this. So we'll evaluate this. This is, so G of Z is uh, Z minus 0 0.8, A, right? It's always good to start your day with some special K. Very nice. Very well done. So this is G of Z. And D of Z is now going to have a, a little gain on it. It's not going to be 1 over z anymore. We're, we're going to have a, a gain. And this needs to be equal to 1. And I'm not going to plug in z star yet. This, um... But you can pull the, the k out of here. So I'm going to have k times the magnitude of 1 over z star times z star minus 0 0.8 so i'm just like combining these terms is equal to one all right so then i can solve for what k needs to be it's going to be one divided by the magnitude of one over z star times z star minus 0 0.8 where z star is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 i well it'll work for the minus as well okay you can do this math by hand but i wouldn't suggest it you'd plug in this complex number for z you could do the plus or the minus conjugate and grind through the math um, and when you calculate the magnitude of a complex number, like a plus b times i, the magnitude is the square root of a squared plus b squared, where a is the real part, b is the imaginary part. Um, so you can do this by hand. We're not going to do it, though. We're going we're gonna to go back to MATLAB, and we're going to figure out what, what k should be. So we're going to talk about how to evaluate this expression. Incoming MATLAB command drop. That's right. You are absolutely right. That's about, that's what's going to happen right here. Um, okay, so we have, wait, we had G. We had D. I'm thinking of the way that I want to do this. <laughs> so if you think about it, K, wait, let's go back here really quick. I'm sorry. I think this will be easier to show. Let's see. So what I want to do this is why I came up with um, da, 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 da. I don't want to say this. 
Okay, this is what I want to say. When I'm doing this in MATLAB, I like to make um, a variable that's called D with no K in it. Um, because D of Z is K times like one over Z. And I like to take this component um, without the gain and I call it in MATLAB, I call it like D no K. It's probably not the best, the best name. Um, but, but that's, that's what I mean by it. So if you follow through the math in this way, I know that this magnitude has to be equal to one. So then K times G of Z, D, no, K of Z is going to be equal to 1. So then that means that K is just 1 divided by the magnitude of G of Z times D with no K. So this is what I'm actually going to write in MATLAB. Okay. So D, actually this, what I called D was the D with no K. So I'm going to say D no K is equal to D. Okay. So it's just one over Z. It doesn't have the K multiplier. So then K is going to be equal to one divided by the magnitude but we use, um, to, to do the magnitude in MATLAB, we use the abs command. It's like absolute value, whatever, but it, it works for complex numbers calculating the magnitude. And so what are we taking the magnitude of? Um, G times D no K. Ashish says, I'll have to watch all the root locus lectures again I get I, I'm telling you it's not it's not easy so it's I'm not surprised if the majority of you are confused right now um, so but we have to evaluate this because it's G times D evaluated at Z star Do I have all my parentheses? Okay. So this is saying you have to make the gain equal to 0 0.32 if you want the magnitude to be one when I take the product of these two things. And we're gonna keep doing this again and again with, with examples uh, throughout next week. So um, it'll become more and more clear. It's not as hard as I'm making it sound. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, so we went through this and it was equal to 0 0.032. Okay, so that means our controller should be 0 0.32 over Z. With this selection, we should satisfy both the magnitude and the angle criterion, and our closed loop poles should therefore be in the beautiful place we wanted them to be all along. Okay, I want to go back, I want to go back to MATLAB. So now we're going to redefine D. We're going to say D is this new shiny K variable times the D component that we didn't have the K with. but So now it's just 0 0.32 over Z, right? Just what we wrote on the paper. So let's first verify the angle criterion again. Um, if you take 
G times D and you evaluate this at our Z star location, which was 0.4 plus or minus 0.4 I. If you take the angle of that, what should it be equal to? It should be equal to pi. That's what the angle criterion says. So boom, if we evaluate that it's equal to pi, we satisfy the angle criterion. Okay, what is the magnitude criterion? If we take G times D, evaluate it at Z star, but then if we take the magnitude, which we use the abs command, it should be equal to one. Aha! Uh -huh. Now let's, uh, so if we satisfy these two things, it's saying that our closed loop poles should be at the place we wanted them to be. Okay, so G closed loop. Did I calculate this? So let's do this again. Let's make the closed loop with our new D variable. This is our closed loop transfer function, but it's way more complicated than it needs to be. So this is the command you can use to simplify it. Okay, so that looks much prettier. It looks a little different than it did before. Um, and what are the poles? They're the values of Z that make this polynomial go to infinity. So we have to find the roots of the denominator. So one way to do it is you use the roots command and you put in the denominator polynomial. So Z squared minus 0 0.8 Z plus 0.32. And where are the roots going to be? 0.4 plus or minus 0.4 I. Boom! Um, yeah, double, double noise. If you don't want to use the roots command, Plot a root locus for us. Hold on, hold on. You could also use pole. Wait, what is that doing there? Why did it do that? <laughs> wait, why did it do that? <laughs> Oh, wait. <laughs> Pull returns the poles. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> that That's... that's. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay. But, okay, this is, this is it. Um... Forgot that class technically ended eight minutes ago. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> this class shouldn't end. Did I redefine G closed loop? Let's look. Oh. Oh, you're right. I should simplify. I should say G closed loop is the simplified version of G closed loop. Now, what if I do poll? Aha! Jack Gudo coming in with the the save, saving the day. Uh, could we? Somebody asked if we could draw the root locus. So I think you do root locus and you, you do the root locus of the open loop transfer function without K engaged um, gasp testing art. Yeah, I was just testing you guys. Let's see what this does. Now, if this does what I think it'll do, it's going to make a nice root locus spidery looking plot but it's gonna pass through the beautiful location of 0.4. Oh, this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be cool. Let's zoom in. So this is showing where all of your closed loop poles could be. And notice 0.4 minus 0.4. If we find, cause if you click on this, 
it tells you look at this look at this look at this uh to have your pole be at 0.4 plus 0.4 the gain has to be 0.32 which is what we already know so it all comes full circle it all comes full circle will there be a 334 lecture today yes yes there will be okay hey everybody we're gonna we're gonna close it here Thanks for hanging with me. Um, I know the root locus is confusing right now. Um, but like I said, it'll become more clear the more examples we do. And, 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 it, and it can actually be a very quick way to design a controller. So it's, it's good to have in your toolbox to be able to do this. Uh, but don't worry if... If the concepts are eluding you right now, we'll, we'll keep doing examples. Um, whew. I'm glad it's Friday. Hey, Dr. Isis, I have a question about my choice of topic for the grad project. Hey, thank you, Pika Pika. Um... Oh yeah, I think the first day of spring technically is tomorrow. That's awesome. Hey, Belka, you enjoy your weekend too. Uh, Weiss, 13. How would you shoot me... Um, you want to do a rotation control system for a wind turbine? I may be able to use common filter for this, but I don't know if I should use unscented or extended. Well, both of those, extended and unscented, can be applied to nonlinear systems. The unscented method is a little newer. It's a little more computationally efficient. We could talk about this more. Um, we could set up an appointment. You could email me, or we could talk about it in office hours. Because I have another class of 150. I need to run. Um, Carl had a question. Can we use the same general transfer functions discussed in class? Question about the homework. Yes, Carl. I think the answer is yes. Hey, not prof. Have a great weekend. Thanks for stopping in as always. Yeah. Send me an email. Um, Benny, you want to include, I mean, you want a proposal. You want to be as specific. Like if you look at the rubric, actually, I made a rubric for the project proposal. I think you can view that rubric. Um, but, but it asks you to be specific as you can at this stage. Like you obviously haven't done the project yet because you're just proposing to do it. So you don't know all the details and things might change, but you should be as detailed as you can be right now. Hey, D Stratus, have a great weekend. Everybody have a great weekend. I would love to stay in chat. I really enjoy it. Can you deny our proposal? Uh, yes, I'll let you know. Like I probably won't just flat out deny it. I'll, I'll be like, hey, um, you should think about taking this this direction or another direction and, and maybe we could tighten up this topic a little bit. So I'll give you feedback. Get you on the right track. All right. Adios, my friends.